This June will mark 52 years since the Stonewall riots. The events are considered to be a birthmark for the modern gay rights movement. Gay, straight, black, white. It was a hot and humid summer day in New York City where the movement began. In the early morning hours of June 28, 1969, police storm and raid the popular gay bar, which opened a year earlier. Leading up to the Stonewall riots, police would frequently raid the bustling bar. What made this day so different, people fought back, and some onlookers joined them too. Some bar patrons even barricaded the police inside. And they gave the police a sample of the treatment they had been subjected to for years. It was just the first of five nights of what would be known as the Stonewall Riots. One of the most prominent figures in sparking that fire was Marsha P. Johnson, who many say was the vanguard of the pushback against the police. As police set Stonewall on fire, they ignited an even bigger flame. The gay rights movement spread like wildfire across the U.S. and the world, giving gay, lesbian, and trans people the courage to speak their truth and demand equal rights. Part of Stonewall is like, queer people were being effective of pulling ourselves into public life and demanding to be seen and recognized. And the only way to quash that is through violent opposition. It would take four years after Stonewall for the board of the American Psychiatric Association to remove homosexuality from its list of mental illnesses. It was a crippling judgment call that Romeo Jackson, assistant director of social justice and student diversity at UNLV says can be felt for generations. It's sad, like you know all the queer people that we lost, right, that were institutionalized, marked as disturbed, right, and, you know, like, I feel a profound sense of loss. You know, we've lost generation upon generation of queer and trans people. In July of 1981, one article changed the world forever. The New York Times publishes this article of skin cancer found in 41 gay men in New York and California. Now, the CDC initially called it GRID, Gay-Related Immune Deficiency Disorder. When the symptoms were found outside the gay community, the name was changed to AIDS. Jackson says the government is to blame for failing to inform the public on the true nature of this disease. And we saw a systematic failure from the federal government to respond to the AIDS crisis adequately, right? And quickly and with urgency. And in many ways, we're still caught up in that. In the years to follow, the world would see increasing violence against the LGBTQ community. But in October of 1998, the horrific death of a young man would send shockwaves around the world and demands for change. Matt Shepard, the gay college student savagely beaten last week in Wyoming, died this morning. The killing of Matthew Shepard in 1998 became one of the worst anti-gay hate crimes in American history. Shepard, a student at the University of Wyoming, was brutally beaten, tortured, and left to die in below freezing temperatures by Russell Henderson and Aaron McKinney. More than two decades later, an anti-LGBTQ hate groups are on the rise. Queer people shouldn't have to be understanding to the violences that we experience every day. Right? Period. Like, hard stop. That's it. We shouldn't have to be. It was a historic day for equality. On June 26, 2015, the United States finally living out the ideals upon which it was founded for liberty and justice for all. On this day, with a 5-4 vote in Oberfell versus Hodges, the Supreme Court ruled that all 50 states may not deny marriage license to same-sex couples. and must recognize same-sex couple existing marriages. A sign of relief rippled across the country. This was a landmark ruling that generations before us fought for. And now, love wins finally. We've always been here. We're not going anywhere. Um, and so why not join the movement? 
why not come build with us and work with us? Like, that's, that's how we all get through it. That's how we all make sense of the world. Well, coming up in part two, anchor Jackie Costick will speak with Matthew Shepard's friend about his life and the legacy his killing left behind and how we can all be a part of the solution to make this world a brighter place. Alicia Patillo, 13 Action News.